Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here today, my name is Audrey and we are going to be talking about Black Widow. We are reviewing Black Widow here today. We're going to talk about lots of things, plots, characters, the villain, uh, it's a theory that I have, and a post credit scene because that was probably the most important part of this film moving forward was the post credits. If you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe and stick around. I do two videos a week. Right now we're doing a lot of Marvel stuff um, just because there's a lot of Marvel content that's coming out. Next week we will be doing the finale for Loki, so be sure to subscribe to check that out. I also do DC, beauty, uh, other comics, <laughs> vlogs, lots of stuff on this channel, so there's something here for everybody. I would love for you to stick around. But uh, first, we're going to talk a little bit about the plot. So this is a largely self-contained film. It is very similar in Marvel type of films to The Winter Soldier. So people are com comparing it to that. Um, I will be quite honest with you. I do not think it is as good as The Winter Soldier. Um, this film is awkward in senses that it is a prequel, <laughs> except for the post credit scene. Um, this film serves as a way to wrap up, oh, by the way, uh, there will be spoilers in this. Um, this film to, sets to wrap up Natasha's story, uh, bridge together some gaps, but also mostly to set up Yelena. So, um, this is a bit awkward in the sense that if you're going in this thinking that it's going to create some sort of future for Black Widow, which I don't know why you would since she is dead in the present timeline, it's not going to do that. It's also not linking anything with Loki. There's no fake out in death. It's not a variant Natasha. It's not like that. She is confirmed to be dead. She's not going to come back. This is the send off for her and the set up, set up for Florence Pugh's Yelena. Now, um, the other characters could still come back. They did survive. Um, so we're going to go a bit into the different characters that were there. This... Pretty much the, the plot of this is just that uh, Natasha finds out that the Black Widow program is still active and that um, Drakoff, who was in charge of it, is still alive, although she thought she killed him. Um, her killing Drakoff was the catalyst for her becoming uh, a member of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, this was her mission in Budapest with Clint Barton Hawkeye. So, um, she didn't really complete her mission very well if he was still alive, uh, but she's still able to get the shield regardless. So this sees her team back up with her sleeper cell Russian spy family from the 90s where she was in Ohio before she ended up having to go back to Russia and rejoin the Black Widow program. Natasha was uh, in a family unit with Yelena, who was like her little sister as well as Melina and Alexi, aka the Red Guardian, were her parents. Uh, in the comics, Red Guardian is her ex-husband, so it's a little awkward in that sense, but it works for the movie. If you don't know anything about the comics, it's fine. It works out. She re reunites with everybody to try to take down Dracoff, um, and is successful in doing so. Taskmaster is in this, kind of. Taskmaster does not get a lot of play. Taskmaster is facing a lot of flack, which I think is pretty justified. It's not good. Um, we're going to touch on that a little bit later. So we're going to go uh, over the characters we have. Of course, Natasha Romanoff, Black Widow. She is here. She is running around after Civil War. <laughs> it took me a minute. She's running around after Civil War because she's still on the run. So she's just hiding out in safe houses. There is another character that's with her, which she had some romantic tension, but it obviously wouldn't matter because uh, she's dead. Um, I don't remember what his name was, but he's basically getting stuff for her, like a, a dealer and getting stuff like, like a web, not like a weapons dealer, but like a private contractor. He's getting her like houses, fake IDs, all that sort of stuff that she needs. Then we have Yelena Belova, who is the little sister character to Natasha. She is played by Florence Pugh, um, and she is going to be the biggest character moving forward. Um, she is probably going to be taking over as the Black Widow role. We will touch on her future in the post credit scene because there was a lot that was going on there. She is pretty much a secondary star to this. She is 
gets a lot of play. She's basically on the screen as much as Natasha. So she was uh, chemically controlled um, for the Black Widow program, but gets released. Um, so that's kind of her journey throughout this. That's a big plot point which is the villainary arc, is that instead of just being, like, kidnapped and brainwashed, um, it's a chemical enhancement that just takes away your cognitive thought um, and controls you. So it's very comic booky and super spy in that aspect. Um, yeah, whatever. I didn't really like that, but that's just me. Um, so, yeah, she's in this a lot. Um, and then we have Melina, who is played by Rachel Weisz. She's like, you don't know if she's bad or she's good. It's a big twist towards the end that you you, fig you figure out that they swapped places. So um, she does come around at the end, but for most of the time she is pretty um, loyal to the Black Widow program, or at least the USSR. Um, also featuring that aspect, uh, Alexi the Red Guardian is very devoted to the USSR, um, which does not exist anymore, so Russia, um, and is the only Russian super soldier. So he is the Russian Captain America, uh, essentially, um, which is why he's called the Red Guardian. Red, obviously, for communism. Um, Guarding and protecting and lots of stuff like that. Um, he's very funny in this. He is, but like, you, he's not a good dad figure. He tries to redeem himself towards the end. So um, we do see that kind of strained relationship because he talks about how bored he was on his mission in Ohio, whereas Yelena is like, this was my real, this was my real life to me. I didn't know it was fake. We should talk about the villain, the Taskmaster. I figured Taskmaster was going to be a woman, which uh, she was. Y'all, I don't mind uh, her studying showing up as a heads-up display because she genuinely is known to be really good at mim mimicking. She's just not used, really. She gets a few cool fight scenes, um, and then her reveal is just lackluster. Um, revealed to be Dracos' daughter, who was not killed, which is the biggest guilt for Natasha, is that she thinks she killed a small child, um, did not just disfigured her. And that's one thing, too, that I feel like they go on about how she's just horrifically disfigured. She just looks like she was burned. Um, I don't know. I've known people, personally, who have been burned and gotten like skin graft which is what would have had to happen and then acts like people acting like this is like horrifying to look at seems kind of ableist. I mean not that Dracoff is a good guy but it just screams a little bit ableist to me. I mean she was not horrifying to look at. That's just my point of that. Um, Deadpool is pretty horrifying to look at. She was not that bad. She just had one side of her face was messed up. Um, but yeah it's just not Nothing was really, it was, she was not utilized very well at all. Um, so the fake out, big reveal twist that it's his daughter fell flat. It was not something that was really executed very well. I don't think the switch was very beneficial. There's a lot of jokes that she joins the like worst <laughs> villains of the MCU, which is a letdown. Because there's a lot of pretty good villains moving forward. I think we're really just focusing on having female villains for everything. I mean, that being said, Dracoff is kind of more of the villain of this, but um, I would have liked Taskmaster to do a little bit more. We're going to talk about my theory next. So, Red Guardian is boasting that he fought Captain America in the 80s. Now, Captain America was not active in the 80s, which he gets challenged to. Um, and then it's like, are you calling me a liar? However, if we look at things, especially with Falcon and Winter, Winter Soldier, which this definitely is a connection to, like they are very important to be um, aligned with each other. So if the Red Guardian fought Captain America in, in the 80s um, and during the Cold War, um, it's very possible that he fought somebody like Isaiah Bradley. So that's kind of my theory going, going forward there is that he fought, actually ended up fighting Isaiah Bradley as that version of Captain America. Um, 
during the Cold War, obviously there are a lot of tensions between the United States and the USSR at that point. So I think that would be a really cool twist on that. And just, I mean, he could have just been lying, but I think that would be a very, very cool moment. It is relatively pretty self-contained for the most part until the post credit scene. So the post credit scene ties everything together. Like I said, it's very much in the vein of Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, so of course we get uh, Valentina returning. So in the post credit scene, Yelena goes to visit the grave of Natasha, which is in the Midwest. I think that's pretty sweet. Um, looks like she's in Ohio where uh, her family was, uh, or her sleeper cell family was. So she goes to, ow, I just stabbed myself with a pen. <laughs> she goes to visit Natasha's grave, does a little whistle, it's very sad. Um, but then Valentina shows up and it's clear that Valentina and Yelena work together. So. Yelena is most likely a member of the Thunderbolts, although it's like, kind of, are they the Thunderbolts? We don't really know. We've not had a name drop. Um, we we don't know about, I mean, clearly she's working within the United States government at this point. We don't know the influence of Thaddeus Ross, although Thaddeus Ross is in this movie. Um, and I think it's really interesting that, <laughs> I think it's really funny that Natasha brings up the fact that he's gotten... Uh, it's just surgery. He just looks rough. He looks like he's got a lot of Botox going on there. Um, I just really want him to become a Red Hulk, but uh, I think, yes, she is probably, she is definitely a member of the Thunderbolts, the team, um, or some version of the team that Valentina uh, got a U.S. agent, John Walker, to join um, as well. So, yeah, I really like uh, ex-villains, like sort of very morally gray characters joining up on this because Yelena's definitely more morally gray than uh, Natasha. They said she's like the most ruthless of the Black Widows. So very interesting there. She shows her a little um, iPad picture of, she's like, oh, this is so sad. You know who did this? Clint Barton. Um, so Yelena is uh, gonna go kick some Clint Barton ass. She's gonna go kill him. Why would Valentina show this? Why does she want to kill Hawkeye? I don't know. I feel like uh, Valentina just has her own agenda, so she's going to try to maybe pick off members of the Avengers so that she has her own team. Um, but I think, you know, I don't think Yelena is going to kill Clint Burton. I think she's going to come across uh, Kate Bishop and Clint Burton and... Uh, they're gonna explain what's going on. I think this movie was okay. Um, it was better than I expected it to be. Yelena's very funny. I thought there were very funny moments of it. It tonally wise, it's very similar to the Captain America movies, so the espionage and government uh, arguing and stuff like that. I feel like their pacing was weird at points. It came out at a very weird time. Um, the post credit scene was the only thing that made it seem like it fit within the timeline. So. That's just kind of my thoughts on it. Um, so yes, it was better than expected, but I wouldn't say it's uh, top tier for me. Um, at this point, still nothing beats the Guardians of the Galaxy. So we'll see um, if anything is going to top that. I, I'm just excited we're back at the movies, and I hope this does well. And to show that we can still do some movies post this uh, pandemic era. So uh very excited for that. But let me know what you thought about Black Widow down below. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts. Where do you place it in your MCU ranking? Let me know down below. And as always, please subscribe again. Like I said, give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you on Wednesday for the Loki finale. If you missed episode 5 going over all the Loki variants we saw, you can check it out here. Bye.